Hey guys, welcome to Cover to Cover, where we bring literature and discussion together online. My name is Sam. Vanessa. Brian. And today we're going to be covering a great book called Three Cups of Tea. Um, just to give you guys a heads up, which is what we always do, this is a spoiler alert. We're going to be talking about the entire book. So if you haven't read it yet, you might want to pick it up first before you tune in. Or if you're still interested, that's just fine, but we're going to be discussing the book as a whole. Um, first, I kind of want to get into what uh, motivated us to choose this book. Um, I actually had a conversation with Vanessa about it, so it's technically my pick because I wanted to do it, but I want to let her talk about how she got introduced to it or, or why she ended up reading it herself. Um, you know, I picked it up. It was it was kind of like a, a hot topic for a while there. It was, it was a bestseller. Yeah, it was a bestseller. Yeah. It was right after 9-11, mm -hmm. um, I believe, and, um, you know, it promoted an idea which I loved, which was that, you know, promote education instead of violence, mm -hmm. basically, is kind of the book's motto. Um, so that's why I picked it up. Um, I was interested. And, and, awesome. Yeah. So <laughs> this is the first time that I, I'm probably going to have a departure of an opinion from the other two. I'm not sure. But I, I, I love the story as a whole. I love the meaning behind it. I love the sacrifice that, that Dr. Greg had made. I love how motivating it is. I hated the writing style. I just, I, I was, it was torture for me. Um, this was the first time that I've really picked up a book. And no matter how many pages I read, I feel like I didn't get very far. Um, and so it took me hours and hours just to finish it. Um, the style of writing that it is, in my opinion, is made more for like an article that you pick up in a magazine. But it just kept going for 300 pages. And that's what I couldn't really um, get so much into. I don't know if you guys felt the same way, but... Uh, it was just like fact after fact after fact and I'm just like where is the meat of it and I look back and I can recall all these events that took place and I kind of like filtered out all the unnecessary um, uh, just the the filler um, that just wasn't needed to explain everything that went on but um, and I felt like it was a very so the the writer is a journalist who used to write for magazines. Exactly, and there's so, two writers technically. Yes, technically there's two writers. Um, and they kind of collaborated to make this book. And um, that really shows in the way the, the that it's written. And it also, he the writer even says in the very beginning, like, I'm, you can't be invested in a story like this and not take a side. And yeah. so he is very like, like, Biased. <laughs> very biased. I yeah. feel like he's very, very, very biased, and he's very there's there's a lot of hero worship um, to his writing, um, which I mean, take it as you will. What your opinion is of that? Um, how about yeah. your opinion? No, I, I totally agree with you guys. It's it's full of a lot. It reminded me like a New York Times article. Yes. Like sometimes it's just like okay, but it just kept going. like it just, well, that's how sometimes <laughs> yeah. their articles are. Yeah, like yeah. You, you have to spend like fifteen minutes reading one article because it's yeah. just so much. Yeah. Um, I think there was a lot of detail. I I definitely think it could have the story could have probably been told in like maybe close to about half, maybe a little bit more than what the book actually took, mm -hmm. just because of the amount of detail. Mm -hmm. um, but overall, I, I mean, I, I did, I like the story. I definitely, there's definitely a bias behind the story because obviously the guy had to, the author had to buy in first before he really decided to write a book about it. But I also, story. I want to bring up uh, another Morton's point that just kind of like, it, it kind of, it, it didn't creep me out necessarily. It reminded me of American Pastoral because mm -hmm. the book was written in a third person from a first person perspective. And yeah. so I felt like invasive when he was talking about how his wife had given birth in the tub, but he was saying it like he was there with them. Yeah. Yes. And I just felt like, this is weird. Yes. Like I shouldn't be knowing this stuff. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of like, kind of like ghostwriting. That's what it really yeah. was. It, it, yeah. Mm -hmm. It was like a combination. And this is what I respect about it because even though I did, dis I disagreed with it, I would never write in this style. What I respected was that they, co they combined, um, uh, a third person perspective it was like it was like fictional writing but for an for a biography yeah mm -hmm. and uh, so I can respect that I'm just wondering how dr. Greg could recall so many of those details and then the choice of his co-writer to implement those in there like the mm -hmm. tidbits of conversation and these intimate moments you know even like mm -hmm. they described what his relationship was like was like when he first married his wife in like a matter of a couple weeks and their sex life and you know all yeah. that stuff and yeah. I was just like I don't know if I should be I felt like I was like reading somebody else's diary yes yeah but i kind of had permission but. but i think that i think that that was the that was the point of the book because if you really think about it he's really talking about he's not even afraid to discuss the points where he was just like defeated mm -hmm. and and that was something i really enjoyed about this book it was the fact that he was this was kind of a hero story but they actually he they didn't really downplay the fact that yeah it struggles like 
you know, turn after turn after turn, there's something mm -hmm. going on. There's something, another obstacle he has to overcome mm -hmm. and how eventually like it, it, it would beat him down. And then he would then go back, you know, go back home and find something else to, you know, kind of inspire him again. And then he would, yes. you know, get back to work. And so I think that that's kind of what they were going for. It was that amount of detail to kind of deter, like to really give you that kind of human realistic um, view of this person that, yeah, this, this person has accomplished a lot. But it's it's also it's through struggle, through yeah. struggle that, yeah. that everybody faces, you know, Agreed. And, and they go over that, too, like towards the end of the book, some of the um, just some of the I issues that the what was the name of the institute? Um, oh, CA, CAI. CAI. Yeah. I wanted yeah, I, I was, wanted to call it CIA. <laughs> every, yeah. CAI. Yeah. The, 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 the what was it standing for? Asian Institute. Yeah. yeah. Um, the institute that he creates yeah. to make these schools in Pakistan had a lot of issues. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. Just, from just, the start. Yeah, from the start. I mean, first, they're building schools between Pakistan and India in some of the most remote regions. Yeah. They're building them for girls they're building them you know kind of in the face of a lot of like uh very um religious it was dangerous yeah it was very dangerous <laughs> yeah, it was very awesome. very had, dangerous like, conflicting groups and you know I, at that one point when they mm -hmm. had different groups trying to convince them to build the school the first school in, in their village rather than yes. the original village yeah yes to do it. Mm -hmm. and so i think that that also was really interesting the fact that he's like able to manage himself uh manage himself or manage his way through all these situations yes. with these people that absolutely needed these these resources but yes. then it's like okay well i've already committed myself to this but I'm also willing to commit myself to help you in the future. Yes. And I think that that's a lot of it was, yeah, he had to then go and say, like, I will help you, but yeah. I can't help you now. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, and I thought one of the most powerful scenes is towards the end of the book it, when when he's sitting, you know, in that first village. They're they're talking about, you know, the next the future plans for for these schools. And, you know, it's, it's all of these men in basically this like boys club that they have. Um, I think he even calls it that. Um, where they're planning their next moves and in comes one of the original, one of the first girls from that first class of students that right. he built the school for. And she's 18 now. Yeah. She basically educated, educated you know, one, one uh, you know, she, um, she right. barges in to the middle of this group and she demands that, you know, uh, Dr. Greg actually fulfill a promise he made to her mm -hmm. however many years ago when he said if she wanted to become a doctor, he would pay for it. And <laughs> she's written this proposal in English. Yeah. She's bullet pointed it. Like she's she's broken down like the funds and, and where the funds would go. And like that is kind of one of the most powerful moments of the book because it really shows like the power of what Dr. Greg has done in this area. It completed that yeah. cycle where you are first in it and then you pass it on to somebody. Mm -hmm. Now you're completing that cycle and then she's going to be able to provide that to somebody else. And yes. kind of like going all the way back to the beginning and you're talking about how you can gain something out of a struggle. That's what I really enjoyed about this was that that was the common theme is that no matter what obstacles lay ahead, they were just bulldozing through them and they were developing ideas, not with what the circumstance that they had, but trying yeah. to um, create something out of that. Whatever, yes. whatever yeah. pieces they had, whatever, they just put their ideas and their skills and yeah. their supplies together and they made it work. Mm -hmm. I like how in the beginning, he essentially, it didn't even start out that he wanted to create this school. He was yeah. just climbing a mountain. Which yeah. he didn't even, and he reminds the reader constantly. Which he failed. He failed. Climb. And every yeah. single time he went to that region in Pakistan, he could see that same peak, and it would be a reminder to him that he failed. But the metaphor was that he was looking at this when he all this time was really looking right in front of him, mm -hmm. which was even more rewarding. Yeah. And, and that failure had led to something else. Instead of him, instead of him giving up, instead of him not ever going back to that region, which a lot of people I could see doing, yeah. he decided to do something about it. And he in turn was like repaying the people who had cared for him and who had helped yeah. him. Mm -hmm. I, what I really liked about the book was just like the whole communal feel of it. Mm -hmm. Because it, it wasn't it wasn't like he accomplished all of this by himself. It, he always had he was always able to find somebody that mm -hmm. was willing to to help him because of the greater good that he was trying to do. You know, it, yes. even when he went originally went back with the money to get the supplies, he had you know, he he met up with his friend that he had made in, in a previous right. track. And he was able to go in and negotiate all these prices for him and get make sure he got the best material for the best price. And that was kind of Dr. Greg's like biggest like super power really was not that he could, you know, uh, get the money or build the schools. It was that he 
he forged connections mm-hmm. throughout yeah. the entire that region. That was his main talent. That was really, his yeah. main talent was was convincing people that, you know, he he was here for the greatest good. Um, which actually I have kind of a big reveal. I don't know if you know this, but You're pregnant. No. <laughs> that too. <laughs> um Let me guess it's a boy. <laughs> <laughs> no, um it was actually revealed that a lot of what the author wrote wasn't true. Oh wow. What? Yeah. Wait a minute. No way. You, I, I didn't know any of this. Yeah. yeah like, no it's just like my yeah. honest reaction. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, so, so you know more about what wasn't true as opposed yes, to what was? So um, there, a couple of years after, so after the book was written, um, it really like poured a lot of money into the CAI um, Institute yeah, to build more schools, to, to do good. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. President Obama donated $100,000 of his... Nobel Prize money to this Ooh. institute. Wow. That's a lot of money. Um, counterinsurgent like groups um, that were studying terrorism talked to Greg Mortensen about his experiences, and it was actually revealed that a lot of it was a lie. Oh my wow. gosh! Yeah, um, he he used the money for, and it, there's always there's actually a little bit of a battle about how much of it was a lie. Um, Oh, of course, because like but, I can't think of yeah. anything that would he, be. He built schools. He didn't build as many as he said. Okay. A okay. lot of the backstory that was that was said was made up. Now I'm wondering if like him getting kidnapped by the Taliban, the Taliban and, and, and being released, mm-hmm. and, yeah. Yeah. and that they donated money to his cause. Mm-hmm. So yeah, here, here's my duty. I feel like now I have to kind of go and do more yeah. research on this. Yeah, I'll yes, definitely will. there was a book produced or that came out years after called Three Cups of Deceit." Oh wow! Oh. And it goes. <laughs> Into a detailed oh. account. We have three cups. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> this is our three cups of deceit. Cheers. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> this is all her fault. <laughs> I was. I was wondering if you. Yeah. No. Uh, a lot of it was made up. Um, he. A lot of it was, and and people don't know if Greg, Dr. Greg Mortensen. Um, is did a it, doctor? No. Did it on purpose, <laughs> or if Honorary. he was just so bad? at running this institute that like the money just disappeared, but they can't track where a lot of the money went through in this, oh, through awful. his institute. Um, they that's went to a lot of these case, schools. Though. They were empty or they weren't built where he said they were built. Yeah. Um, wow. People went to the villages he went to. They tell very mm-hmm. different stories from the stories he told. Wow. Even the beginning scene that, that first like, the aha moment where he goes to this village mm-hmm. and he spends all this time with them and he's so, you know, blown away by the poverty in this area. He was there for like an hour or two. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, because yeah. he even talks, he talks in the book that when he's, uh, that when he was trying to recover, mm-hmm. that he was going around in the village and helping them and like, you know, uh, treating them since he was like an ER nurse. Yeah. Uh, it was all a lie. Wow, oh, man. That, it was that, all that a dream. Totally and, <laughs> and I'm sad. There's a You're question right? about who was the liar. Was it, Mr. Mortensen, or was it the author himself? Um, huh. Because Embellished. after after it was um, after that, the Three Cups of Deceit book was released. The author actually committed suicide. Wow. Oh wow! I mean, yeah. I could, just, I could just definitely see yeah. that though, especially the way it's written and how we've talked about yeah. it, how it's there was definitely it seems a glorification yes. of the main character. It seemed very co- yes, so, very fictional. Yeah. Here, here's what I'll say. Yeah, you know, we, this was supposed to end our like biographical type of thing, and since <laughs> yeah. we're kind of going back into fictional after this, <laughs> let's call it a blend. <laughs> yes. Let's call it. Yes. Let's call it for what it was, yeah. and you know, despite that, which was yeah. shocking, like yeah there was still a lot to gain from it. And even if you want to consider this to be a fictional story, um, it really did motivate me to, to, to look at my own obstacles and to make sure that I'm not just seeing them as that to Mm -hmm. always just find a way. Um, the three cups of tea, the title actually really resonated with me Mm -hmm. as far as like, once you meet somebody first, they're a stranger, then they're a friend and then they're family. Mm -hmm. I've definitely felt that sort of like, um, like progression with my own friends to mm-hmm. where we started out like not even really knowing each other and then it just kind of progressing and now it just feels like we were we've known each other our yeah. whole lives well yeah. we all definitely feel like we know greg mortensen we do but do we yeah, <laughs> but really, yeah. <laughs> actually i yeah, tune in once if, <laughs> if we can start doing our, our podcast yeah. we can kind of probably un- yeah. un- unravel yes. the true story or maybe yeah. do our own uh Yes. Our own research. Well, on and it. I, I read an article <laughs> written by the Washington Post a couple years after it was, 
kind of publicized that it was all not all a lie, right? But that a lot of it was fabricated, and a lot of the money that went into the institute for good reasons or bad reasons, you know, for, through this organization ended up where it shouldn't have ended up. Huh. Um, you know, um, and this article was very interesting because it really it showed Greg Mortensen going back to Pakistan years after, after the author had committed suicide, after his own family had almost fallen apart because of the deceit oh, that went sure. on, you know, the the public humiliation. Um, and it follows Greg Mortensen going to some of these villages and uh, some of these empty villages, um, empty schools. Um, and it's kind of almost, it's a really strong metaphor for what, what this book promised, which was some of it empty. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, That's so interesting. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, the, the, ha the cup is half full. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, just to kind of wrap things up, it had a really great message. Um, all all in did. all, I did enjoy it. The style and the format of the, of the, of the writing, I wasn't really in love with, to be honest. Um, and I think it could have been condensed even mm -hmm. further down. But now that you kind of revealed that, it kind of makes more sense that it was probably just expanded on. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like one of those things, like when somebody starts lying, they can't help it. And they start like yeah, coming up with- Yeah, fabricating more they, and more they, and they more. They keep making up more Maybe we thought more. it was like for a greater cause, you know, yes. considering what he had been doing. And he figured, hey, if I can get people to buy into him and yeah. to what mm -hmm. he's doing, then that'll give him more funding yeah. to do that. Overall- And there's no denying that he did build schools. Right. And he yeah. did forge connections. That is the important thing is that these things actually did happen. It did help, uh, especially in that region. I think yes. that there's going to be some lasting impacts with that and hopefully there are people even if they didn't know or what or even if they did hopefully it inspired them to perhaps do something even similar mm -hmm. i know that eventually in later in, in my later stages of life i want to do something humanitarian and even just the way that they explained how this all went about it made it more clear and mm -hmm. and it seemed easier mm -hmm. uh for me to accomplish this or maybe it's not <laughs> but uh it made I think me it definitely just, more motivated. like i said it, i think it painted a, a, hu a human aspect it, it, a more realistic aspect of being able to what you may encounter trying to accomplish something right mm -hmm. and you know all the all the struggles and everything so mm -hmm. that's I what can at least take was. that yeah yes. i can at least take that there was positive can, yeah. intent yeah Let's, yes. like, i think we can agree on that, that yes. they, they weren't trying to just deceive people just to swindle money like there was a purpose behind it it wasn't all fraud yeah it was a motivating uh, i'm gonna give it a thumbs up i really did enjoy it what do you guys think i mean as far as fictional writing goes <laughs> um, <laughs> thumbs <Top notch>. up. <laughs> all right. I'll, I'll give it a thumbs up cool, guys. Enjoy this. Uh, well thank you so much for tuning in that definitely took a different turn than what i expected <laughs> but that's just goes to show what like literature and this you know type of discussion uh can do um thanks so much for tuning in the next time you see us we're going to actually shift into a different mode we chose a trilogy we wanted something really fantastical so we're going to be talking about infernal devices um, I, you know, I'm a fan of, of science fiction. I'm a fan of, of fantasy novels. I've never really dived into a book with like a strong female lead with the sci-fi magic aspect. So I'm excited about that. Um, and, uh, yeah, join us next time. Thanks guys. Thank you. Thank you.